Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Club Junkie Podcast. Hopefully you're having a great week. It's Thursday again. Just It just gets to Thursday so fast in this week, and we've been busy here in the office just doing some stuff, uh, getting ready for Best Irons uh, coming out, I think, next week, uh, if not the week after, but working with a bunch of fitters, getting that stuff ready, and it's just just taking a while and it's busy and I'm doing a lot of like fitter interviews, which is, which is fun getting to talk to a lot of fitters across the country. But, uh, before we get into today's episode, just want to let you know this episode brought to you by Titleist and the brand new Pro V1 and Pro V1 X to be your best today. You have to outperform the player you were yesterday. For some, it might be breaking 80 for others. It might be breaking the course record. And for all of us, it's playing a golf ball. We know will help get the, get the most out of our game. The new Titleist Pro V1 and Pro V1X are the most advanced to date and will help reward your best swings like never before. Both models are longer, even more consistent, and feature unrivaled control. Pro V1 is the best combination of distance, spin, and feel in the game and delivers a penetrating flight, where Pro V1X flies higher and spins more in the the short game while still giving you low spin on longer shots to maximize your distance. Find out more about the new Pro V1 and Pro V1X, including which is the best choice for you at Titleist.com. So I'm getting close to getting the new Pro V1s out there. I'm really excited. I've got uh, a couple boxes of Pro V1Xs. Uh, I think I'm going to go back to the X. Uh, just, you know, I, I like kind of that higher ball flight, uh, you know, especially with the irons. You know, driver, I can, I can kind of launch it okay. Uh, but with the irons, it's kind of nice to hit that thing up in the air and get it to stop. Uh, same thing with the wedges, be able to hit it high when you need to. So uh, I think I'm Pro v one it this year, which would be, uh, which would be pretty cool. So, um, anyway, getting into, uh, today's show and yeah, we've, uh, like I said, we've been kind of busy with doing best irons. I know best of lists are, uh, we did driver, uh, in fairway driver, fairway woods, um, a few weeks or actually probably about a month, probably about a month ago did those. Uh, it was really interesting, you know, really interesting to talk to, to talk to these fitters all across the country from, you know, you know, club champions to, uh, local locally here, the the guys at Carl's Golf Land, which is a, a huge fitting outlet here, uh, to the you know the boys at Miles of Golf in Michigan, who you know kind of uh, uh, were kind of one of the first big time fitters uh, here. I remember when they kind of started everybody talking about this Miles of Golf place because it was a little far away from where I grew up. So, um, but talking to these guys and 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 all over the country, you know, some of the guys in Canada, um, it's just uh, you know talking to these these fitters all over the country and getting their their thoughts on. What irons uh, that that are going into the ba- you know going into bags? What they're seeing uh, in in these fits and and what they're seeing uh, you know these players succeed with and it's uh, it's pretty interesting. It's pretty cool and it, it's pretty. It's always fun to talk to these fitters because, as much as I go out and hit a lot of stuff and I hit all these products and um, you know I, I kind of have my opinions on them. Uh, what you know what what works better, what doesn't? You know these guys are looking at. Pfft, a hundred times more, she's a hundred times. They're really like thousands of times more swings than I'm <laughs> than I'm dealing with. So their knowledge, their data, their their expertise is is extremely valuable. And you know, and most of the the people in golf, all these fitters, they're they're, they're super nice people. They're they're awesome to talk to. They're they're happy to talk some golf, even uh, you know, even when they're not doing a fitting and all that they're still happy to talk about some golf and talk about some equipment and it's funny we even get off on you know certain shafts and things like that kind of you know stuff segues as you as you talk to people but um but that'll be fun doing the uh, best i haven't even seen the uh, the results yet so I, I know that uh i think we still have uh stuff coming in and all that i don't think re- results are final but um like i said i've been i've been calling these fitters and doing kind of interviews talking about different irons and, and stuff they're seeing so a lot of fun. Uh, it'll be, I think, like I said, I think it's coming out in the next two weeks uh, or so. That'll be coming out. And it'll be cool. Uh, it's always fun to see. Uh, we, of course, are doing Best Blade. And I'll tell you right now, when you talk to fitters and you go, all right, we're getting into the blades, they all kind of roll their eyes and go, oh, geez. It's amazing when you talk to these these fitters and, and how few blades they fit compared to, you know, every other type of iron, even for, you know, really good players. They just don't fit that many blades, and it's it's pretty funny because they're like, yeah, I mean, every all, every one of them, just like the sample size on these is just so much smaller because even the the best players that walk in there that are scratch, you know, plus handicaps, whatever, they're getting into you know cavity backs, and you know, he's like, just your you know T one hundred type sets, Z, ZX sevens, you know, he's like, you're just not, you know, even for those players, you're not seeing the blades come into play there. Almost everything is, you know, cavity backs are a little above. So, um, but I mean, I know everybody wants to hear, you know, what's, you know, what, what blades these, these, these fitters are, are putting people into. Uh, it's, it's like I said, they, they always kind of roll their eyes and, oh, geez. And you're like, yep, I know, but you know, we got to do it. So 
been a lot of fun. Uh, you know, been been really thankful for these uh, these fitters to take their time out to talk to me and to fill out you know all our our paperwork for putting this all together. So a lot of fun there. Uh, for me, just been uh, just been messing around. I uh, I was I haven't been tinkering a whole lot in the shop because, like I said, it's been kind of busy. Um, I have been I haven't messed with a, a ton of stuff. I kind of finished building uh, that set of last week. I think it was last week. I was building a set of uh, or reshafting uh, a set of uh, original 790s, TaylorMade P 790s, uh, with some steel fiber uh, 95s in there. Uh, so got that done. Um, it's always interesting. I didn't I didn't realize when I was building that set, uh, this the, you know the the guy moved to a, a mid size grip, so the swing weight went <clears throat> a hair lighter. Uh, so I've got it as as basically close as we can. And um, but it was you know it's always fun to to build something, and you know you're always building something for somebody else. You're always you know a little more meticulous about it because when you're building for yourself, you just for me it's like slapping it together to get it on the course. I just kind of don't care if the, you know, if the ferrule's not perfect or I'm not going to turn down a ferrule for me. I don't care. I'm just, you know, taking it out to the course. Um, you know, if, if the grip's on, you know, a slight bit, I mean, I put everything logo down, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but if the grip's just like slightly crooked or whatever, it's like, eh, you know, I'm just going to, I'm taking it out to test it and play it. And after that, I don't really care. So most of the time, uh, a lot of those builds, especially if it's just like seven irons and stuff like that, or just, you know, if somebody sends in like a four, seven pitch or something like that, um, you know, then, uh, I pretty much, you know, I, I don't really care. You know, I, I don't, I don't say I don't really care at all, but like, I just, you know, if something's just slightly crooked like that, not going to affect performance, you know, it's fine. I'm taking it out there. It's more about speed and, and quantity at that point, but Got all that stuff done, and then uh, yeah, I was cleaning out some uh, cleaning out some stuff. And uh, if you don't follow me on Instagram at Club Junkie Pod, I've been posting some of my old, not old, but some of my putter collection. It's not massive by any means, uh, but just as I've been kind of cleaning stuff out uh, and moving stuff around a little bit, I've been uh, I've kind of found the the putter bag in the back corner and pulled a few putters out, and we're just taking some putts uh, down here on the putting mat, and you know just stuff like my my Scotty Ca- my Scotty Cameron Catalina two absolutely love that putter um you know it's still it's it's a you know oil can it's a carbon steel oil can uh, finish so it does rust and all that but the i bought it off a, a buddy of mine got me in touch with a, somebody he knew who was selling it i got it for an absolute steal of a price it still has majority of the oil can finish still on it um it's a touch worn but just a putter that i was you know i, I pulled back out just was hitting some putts with and it was just like man this is just a great great flat stick and uh it'd be interesting because I, I would love to kind of i'd love to see scotty redo that head and do something you know put the move you know put the interchangeable weights in it make it a little bit heavier um, i don't know what the head weight is on that thing but it definitely feels lighter than most of the putters i have and but you know i just i love the look it's a little longer heel to toe it's got you know the little wider flange the triple sight lines on the flange um, it's just overall just a really really good shape and uh, the sound is, is actually just a hair more metallic and loud than I truly like. Um, I would love for the milling to be just a hair deeper to offer just a slightly softer feel and maybe just take a little bit of that sound out of it. Um, but I think doing something like a Catalina 2 with that kind of single band, bend shaft, um, you know, would just be would just be really cool. It'd be, it'd be awesome to see a brand new one. And I actually might, uh, you know, I'm not a guy who chases down Scotty Camerons or anything like that. Uh, but a Catalina 2, if they reissued it, that, that I, I, I might be interested in. But it would be pretty cool to see them do uh, a new version of that. I just, you know, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think that that, that putter was that uh, was that popular. And now with, like, the Newport 2.5s and some stuff like that uh, out there that are kind of wider, uh, you know, wider blades, it, there's just, I don't think, a need for it. You know, it doesn't doesn't fit in the line well. But uh, it'd be cool to, to maybe... Uh, commission that from one of the, you know, one of the boutique putter makers out there that, uh, that, that do custom putters for people. It'd be kind of cool to like almost send them the head and be like, you know, can you make this a little wider? And, you know, just a couple little changes, uh, there, you know, cause I would love it maybe just a hair wider front to back just to make it look a little bit more proportionate, uh, but keep the triple sight line, keep the top line pretty similar in terms of the thickness. Um, and then, you know, like I said, add maybe a little deeper mill would be cool. Um, and I'm going to try not to say, like I said, because I've heard people say, I say it too often, and I apologize. It's one of those, it's one of those ticks when you're just talking by yourself. It's really hard to like. You don't even notice those things because there's nobody else to bounce stuff off of. So when you're just talking to basically a small little camera in front of me, uh, and, and and a microphone on my my left, 
it's it's hard to not get into those little ticks and, and things like that. But uh, today's show, I'm going to do something, uh, got a, a couple irons, did a little, uh, went out and hit a, a handful of irons, uh, all from the same manufacturer, but uh, kind of interesting just to do a little, I don't necessarily, necessarily want to call it a shootout because I don't think people would necessarily compare all these irons together. But I went out and hit uh, basically uh, four of uh, the tailor-made uh, irons and kind of hit them all kind of side by side. I didn't, uh, I basically went with the, hit the P7MB, the P7MC, the P770, and the P790. So all the the, the, the new ones there, excuse me, uh, didn't have the Stealth or Stealth HD uh, out there, but I know a lot of you probably don't care as much about those uh, who listen here. Uh, most of the questions I get are more, probably, you, you guys are probably better players than me uh, by a long shot. So uh, I've, I've talked to a, a lot of people on DMs and things like that who, you know, our scratch players and low single digits and stuff like that. So I don't think a lot of you care about the Stealth HD. Uh, I will say the Stealth HD, I've only hit like five balls with it, something like that. Uh, when I was at the Kingdom a couple months ago, and it is, it it doesn't have the look that people really want. I mean, it, it's got a lot of offset. It's really, it's kind of long heel to toe. It's got a kind of a short, uh, uh, it has a kind of a shallow face to it. So it's got an interesting look. It, it looks like kind of a, like a little mini hybrid. Uh, it goes high in the air and it goes dead straight. <laughs> it just, if you're looking for high and straight and, you know, forgiving all that, like it, it's, it is that club. It just goes high, goes straight. It goes a long way. It's, uh, if you can get by the look of it, uh, it's, it, it performs really, really well, but I didn't, uh, didn't, didn't do those. So like I said, went with the, the MB, the, the MC, the, the 770 and the 790, just to kind of see, um, I mean, the seven MB again is one of those clubs that, I'll hit it here. It's fun, you know. Hit it, get you know, get a few numbers and, and kind of compare it to the others. But it's never going to my bag, even though it's beautiful. Uh, I love it. Let's see, where is it here? If you're watching this on YouTube, and if you go on YouTube and you search Golf the VRX Radio, you can see this show on YouTube if you want. Not that it's anything that exciting. It's my my ugly face uh, sitting on <laughs> sitting in front of a camera and just talking so but i do put the you know i, I do put the uh, the clubs up in the air and, and you know kind of show them off uh but the P- p7mb uh from taylor made uh, this isn't brand new this has been out for a little bit they redid these uh just you know i think uh end of last year or whatever i think we first saw him in morikawa's bag and he had a p7cm uh, so his actually were built you know specifically for him but the mb is the retail version of that which looks very similar I don't think there's uh, too much of a difference cosmetically. It'd be, you know, he's probably got a different sole, a little different shaping, stuff like that. But I think cosmetically, they probably look very, very similar. So it's a traditional, you know, it's a traditional muscle back blade is very debated. This one here, uh, it definitely has that, you know, muscle back blade look. The muscle on the back has kind of a, I guess I want to call it like trapezoidal type, uh, type, or a, design uh, on the rear muscle and what they're doing there is basically adjusting cg with moving that weight you know up and down uh, again depending on the club but uh, it kind of gives it kind of a, a cool sexy little look with the the chrome on the bottom uh, matte finish all over uh, the rest of it and then this little chrome kind of like i said i don't know it's trapezoidal whatever I'm, geometry and i were not uh, best friends back in uh, back in the day uh, but it's got kind of got this uh, this this you know diamond and and or triangular and diamond type shape, uh, you know, on the back pattern. And what they're doing there a lot is is moving that weight around. Uh, you can see that, you know, it's not perfectly symmetrical, and you know the the actual tallest part of the muscle is a little bit higher. So basically, just uh, moving that mass kind of behind the impact spot, and you know, adjusting you know CG accordingly. Uh, but a really good looking iron, very very minimal offset. Uh, it's got just a, just a hair leading edge is pretty straight. It's got just a little bit of radius to it. Top line's thin. I kind of like that. It doesn't have a crazy shoe, super sharp toe, a little bit more rounded, a little softer. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you look at the sole, uh, not a ton of bounce, uh, but, but a good amount. It's not crazy low. Uh, the front leading edge is fairly rounded, fairly blunt. So it does kind of help with uh, the turn of interaction there. Uh, and then the face is, you know, fully milled, and uh, you can see kind of all the milling marks and all that on the face. So overall, I mean, simple, not a ton of tech, uh, basically forged out of steel. They do uh, uh, they do have a kind of a, an interesting, they call it like a compact grain forging. So I think kind of like uh, some other brands are trying to kind of 
get all the metal to kind of move in a certain way to, to increase a little bit of softness and a little bit of uh, responsiveness on the head. But overall, just a really, really good looking blade. When you set it down, it just looks great. It's one of those, I wish my game was good enough to play a set of these because they really are... I mean, they're 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 pretty. They're 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 beautiful. I, I really like the look of them. And, and like I said, the shape from a dress uh, fits my eye really really well. So just enough offset uh, to make you feel comfortable, but not too much where you're gonna kind of uh, you know complain about it. I know you know we've seen recently like Adam Scott's irons have a good amount of offset to them. These definitely have less than that. So overall, just a really good looking blade. No tech to really get into. I mean, uh, they're forged. Uh, one piece forged, and I believe they've even forged the hosel into it as well. I know some places, hosel and, and head are kind of separate, and they, they kind of weld them together, put them together in, in whichever way uh, works for them. But uh, these here, really, really good, and I do have to say they're, they're really soft. Uh, you know, like a lot of forged uh, blades, I know that there's other brands that kind of get the, uh, kind of get the, 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 the reputation of being the softest and, and all that. These are really, really soft. They feel really good. When you get it in the center uh, or very close to center, you actually can, you know, it, it's got good feel. It's one of those where it's just solid. You feel the ball just compress off the face, and it's just one of those precision instruments. You don't have to worry about hot spots or anything like that. There's no, uh, you know, ball flying off the face or anything like that. It's just really good, solid feel. Uh, and the responsiveness is solid. When you start missing it closer out to the toe or uh, a little lower on the face, you're going to feel it. You're going to get that vibration to your hands. When you hit it in the center, it's going to be buttery soft and just almost like the ball, you know, it's almost like you just don't even feel anything. It just thuds and goes. Um, even with crappy range balls, you're getting that just really solid feel. And, uh, and yeah, they're, they're, they're very soft. They're, they're probably, you know, up there with, with majority of, you know, high-end forge stuff that I've hit. It's you know, they're just as soft, uh, you know, they're right up there with it. Um, forgiveness, of course, it, 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 you're going to struggle if you don't hit the center, if you're hitting it low on the face, you're hitting it out on the toe, things like that, you're going to see a bigger drop uh, in, in distance. I mean, when, when I was looking at, uh, at hitting balls there, um, and I'll go th kind of through some of the numbers as well, uh, I could definitely tell, uh, one, launch monitor-wise, two, just ball flight-wise, when you did miss it, the, the drop in performance, the drop in distance, uh, whether it's height, all those things. I mean, it was much more drastic, uh, the misses, which I, I think everybody, I mean, I don't have to, I'm telling you guys this, you've all probably hit blades out there and kind of understand as well. When you hit center, it's so good. And when you miss it, you know, even a little bit, you really start to see that performance go. Uh, and when you do, you know, have a substantial miss, those are shots that are not getting to the green. They're not getting, you know, they're, they're dropping you in the bunker. They're dropping you in a, in a hazard. They're putting you in bad places when you really do miss it. So um, they, they do take a, a pretty good level of precision. But when you do hit in the center, you are rewarded with exact distances. You're rewarded, rewarded with, you know, uh, a flight that's consistent. You're, you know, you're kind of rewarded with all those things. But they're, uh, the, the P7B, really, really good. So when I was kind of hitting these, I kind of hit all, all four. And I don't know if I, like, should I get the numbers of each one and then bring up the other one? Because um, it's kind of easier, I think, to compare if I'm just saying, you know. I, I guess I'll compare the, the MB and the CB because, you know, these two are, are, are pretty darn close. Uh, but the MB, like I said, really, really good. I really like the, uh, um, yeah, I, I really like the feel and everything of that and that about it. I, I just wish I could play it. Uh, and then there is the P7MC, which is kind of the cavity back version, and this is brand new out. I remember this got leaked on Instagram uh, by TaylorMade accidentally right before it was supposed to come out, uh, but they are out now, and again, um, not a whole lot different from the previous version. Uh, they've kind of changed up uh, the graphics and the, the milling and stuff like that in the back, uh, or the forging in the back. I don't think this is actually milled back here, uh, but pretty interesting where you have kind of a, a, a silver... Uh, it's probably a silver painted finish in the, in the small cavity, all chrome on the back. But on the front, everything is kind of a satin or, or you know, um, almost, yeah, I guess it's more of a satin finish. So you don't get the glare or anything like that. The faces on these, again, you know, like the blade, fully milled. So you're getting a consistent flat surface. Uh, sole on this one, not much wider, to be honest. Uh, they're, they're pretty narrow. And to be honest, the cavity in the back is, is pretty darn shallow. So I think anybody kind of looking at the MC is crazy more forgiving uh, than the blade. It, it's probably not that big of a difference. I didn't notice a huge difference between the two. Now on this one here, it is a little bigger blade length uh, or, or larger blade. Uh, again, very minimal offset, maybe just a hair more than the blade. 
but a good transition from Hosel into Leading Edge. Uh, you know, I, I think that there's companies there that can do that really well with their design that you can add a little bit of offset without making it look like there's just an absolute ton of offset. And I think it's just the way they, they blend that, you know, the, the front end or the hosel coming down into the leading edge. If you blend it right, it looks really good. There's some irons out there that people make it really sharp and really aggressive, and it just almost looks like there's more offset uh, than, than should be there. Or it kind of gives a, uh, a look where the iron just almost drops off. To me, I like that kind of, you know, softer, easier transition uh, into the leading edge. Uh, again, it's got a kind of a blunted leading edge as well. Uh, not, it doesn't feel quite as, uh, the radius isn't quite as great as the, the MB. But again, uh, you know, a little more balanced, it looks like, on this. Uh, you know, these are both seven irons. Uh, actually, all four irons I was hitting were seven irons. Uh, but overall, a really good look. Like I said, slightly taller face. Looks a little bit longer heel to toe. But, you know, slightly bigger blade. But not a crazy cavity, and uh, you know, with it, I don't. You know, you're gonna get a little more for forgiveness out of it, but but nothing absolutely crazy. Um, the like I said, look again, really really good. I, I really like the MC. I like the old MC. Uh, I think the new one has a great look as well. These are you know same thing. They've got that same uh, you know compact grain forging, and you know one piece uh, all done. There's no you know, crazy air foam or anything like that. There's no speed slots or on the bottom, nothing like that. It's a, a one piece forged iron. You're not going to get, uh, you know, crazy, crazy ball speeds, anything like this, you know, with the bigger club head, you're going to have a slightly expanded sweet spot, nothing too crazy. Uh, you, you're still going to see that performance drop or that, you know, on, on the ball flight when, uh, when you miss it, uh, you get a little more room, uh, out on the toe and, 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 and into the heel a little bit more than the blade. But, but not a ton. You'll see a lot of guys combo these up and put, you know, MCs and kind of the long irons uh, and, and MBs and the short irons. And then some of us who uh, would get even crazier, you can see something like P770s at the top end, some MCs in the middle, and then uh, MBs at the bottom. And, and TaylorMade's like, you know, they, they kind of promote that stuff. They say, you know, making some combo sets with some different irons. Uh, they even put out like a chart of what, uh, you know, if you did put these sets together, kind of if you had to tweak any lofts or anything like that, where you could tweak them to kind of dial it in. But most people who are going to go down that road and get deep into the weeds are probably going to work with their fitter and they're going to kind of custom bend everything to make sure it all all flows evenly, the gaps are covered, and they're getting the distances they need out of each iron. But 7-iron here, again, like I said, the one thing I was kind of su surprised with, I feel like, and I don't have last year's uh, MC here, but I feel like the, the, the cavity on the top, because there is that little cavity on the top, is a little bit shallower I mean, and i know the old one was was shallow as well i mean it's nothing crazy but i feel like this one's even uh, a little bit more shallow uh, but again feel really really good i would say you know if you were to kind of blind taste test between the mc and the mb it would really be kind of hard to to tell the difference between the two if you're striking at dead center both of them have extremely soft feel they're very solid and much like the mb this one here you can kind of feel that ball just compress into the face and go um, it's just, you know, that, that one piece solid steel behind a ball. Uh, there's nothing else in the way. It just gives it a really soft, solid feel. And again, when you're striking it well, it's just a, a heavy thud. Uh, when the ball leaves the face, there's like zero clickiness to either one of them. When you're hit striking in the center, when you start missing it out there, you'll start hearing that little bit of click. You start feeling that vibration go up the shaft. Um, you know, when you start missing it, whether it's low, whether it's toe, whether it's, uh, you know, most uh, most blades and, and CBs like this, you get a little more, I feel like you get a little more feel out on the heel when you miss it there uh, compared to the toe. But either, you know, but but still, you're going to notice those miss hits a little bit more. Uh, the responsiveness on both of these is, is very, very good. And again, I think, you know, where there's other brands that people kind of know for blades and forge CBs, and they're kind of like, you know, considered higher end or whatever, I think these play with anything. I mean, I think you can put these in uh, in an arena with uh, with just about any other brand CB, uh, Forge CB, and, and MB, and I, and I think you'd be, you know, hard-pressed to say that these are, are, are inferior in any way. So uh, I like the look. Like I said, I, I like that, that uh, Taylor May kind of did the chrome backs, uh, but then left everything else satin so you don't get the glare or anything like that. Um, I know recently I've had uh, the, the new Tour Edge, uh, you know, Forge CB in my hand, and, you know, they look really good, but the whole thing's like chrome, chrome, and I, I'm, I'm a little worried when I get them out on the course uh, what that uh, what that's going to do in terms of glare. These, you know, like I said, this kind of brush satin finish, uh, they're, uh, they, they should should be fine you shouldn't have uh, much glare at all if any 
but overall, again, both really, really good. Comparing these two, uh, they were they were pretty close for me. Uh, I was hitting these, uh, kind of, like I said, I hit all four, had them all out there, and was just hitting balls with, with each one, kind of rotating through. And between the two, the funny thing is, carry distance was exactly the same. Um, <clears throat> I was basically 140, 142 yards with both of them. So they were both pretty much identical <laughs> in terms of of, uh, of yardage. Now, when you go through and kind of look at the shots and look at kind of the, the consistency of... Um, of the carry distances between the two they're uh let's just see here real quick um the you know i see a little more variation uh with with the blade you see just a, a touch of variation more a touch of variation more uh the worst shot is worse um you know the best shot is about the same where there's a little more consistency with the mc so even though it does have kind of a slightly shallow cavity in the back which you wouldn't think does a whole lot i think the slightly bigger blade size does have uh, add a little bit of forgiveness there um, you know compared to the mb like i said consistency especially with kind of the carry number there uh was a little more consistent with the mc i didn't have the kind of the low lows and the high highs uh, i mean neither one of them you really have a high high the, the faces aren't crazy hot anything like that they're they're meant to be kind of precision things where you know your seven iron goes this distance and that's the distance it goes. So um, spin numbers were pretty close. MB sponged a little bit more. Uh, MB spun at 5,705 5, 5, RPM, where the MC was at 5,582. So a little bit more spin with the MB. Nothing too crazy, but but a little bit. Uh, ball speed was actually really close. The MC uh, you know beat it out by 0. 0.4. So 104 miles an hour with the MB. 104.4 uh, with the MC, so really, really close. Again, you saw a little tighter consistency with the MC uh, in terms of ball speed. So when, you know, like I said, for me, I'm, an, I'm a 9.5. I don't hit the center every time. I have good days striking it, uh, and then I have days that, that aren't so good. Uh, hitting the, the the four, you know, these irons there, I was I was I was swinging it pretty decent. I was I was hitting the ball pretty close to center. I mean, there's some low. Sh the, my misses really were were low on the face with the with with most clubs. Um, you know, when I was out hitting them, but uh, like I said, ball speed just a little bit tighter in terms of variance uh, on the MC compared to the MB. But again, really really close. You know, said half a not even half a mile an hour uh, between the two. The smash factor, which I mean, in irons, uh, it does give you a, a little bit. I mean, it's not as heavily leaned on as in driver but one two four for both um the apex was interesting i hit the mb actually a little bit higher typically the mbs kind of fly out flatter they you know come off a little lower they you know all that um but the apex on it actually was i mean it's two feet at an apex which is like nothing um so 85 feet for the mb and 83 feet for the mc um but the actual launch angle on the mc was actually slightly higher uh, which is, you know, like I said, just kind of going through averages, but 22.1 degrees uh, for the MC and 21.3 degrees for the MB. So, uh, you know, about about 0.8, uh, just under one degree launch difference uh, between the MB and the MC. Uh, and both had the same shafts, uh, KBS Tour 120s, same grips, and, uh, you know, loft-wise, these two are the same at, for seven irons at 34 degrees. So, um, pretty close. I mean, if you're going to do uh, a little bit, you know, if you're looking to do kind of a combo set between the two and, you know, you know, really worried about, you know, at the, the six, uh, four, five and six iron, you know, getting a little bit more forgiveness or whatever. I think the MC, I, I, you know, will give you a little bit of it. I think it'll give you a little bit more, uh, you know, let you get away with just a little bit more uh, on the size of the sweet spot on it. And, and it carries a little more ball speed when you're slightly off center. Um, and, and like I said, and, and the only reason I say it is just because, you know, how, how much, more consistent those numbers were uh, and like i said i don't hit it dead center uh, every time but feel on those two really really good uh, i don't have anything to really talk about turf interaction i mean they're they're fairly narrow sold um but and you know hitting off mats and here in the winter in, in michigan we're, we're getting close to to courses being open and stuff like that but we're not quite there yet so can't really comment on turf interaction but overall performance really really solid if you're looking for a, a player's blade or a player's cavity back uh, these two are really good. Uh, you know, if you like the shape and you like kind of the look, I think they're worth trying. I mean, I think, like I said, you could put them up against any. Uh, God, I said it again. I said the like I said. Um, I'm gonna try not to, but I'm, I'm catching myself. But I think you could put these up against you know any other brand and be pretty uh, pretty impressed with how the MB and MC feel. So uh, those two there. Uh, like I said, I, I meh. Uh, these two here. I wish I had the game to play uh, a full set of kind of MBs. Uh, even the MCs, uh, you know, I could probably play in the in the short irons. Uh, anything kind of six and above would be, you know, four, five, six would be tough. Four, there's no way. Um, I just don't think I could 
hit it consistently enough. Five even would be kind of you know pushing it, and then six would be kind of that. I, I would probably move to something uh, a little bit more. So I, I think for me, I would probably go a P770 in the longer, you know, maybe a P794 iron, 770 in the five and six, and then do you know I, I, at that point you probably just do seven eight nine pitch in the in the MC. For me, I'd probably just skip the blade altogether. But uh, if I did it, maybe do seven eight in the mc and then you know nine in pitch in the mb but i don't don't think uh you know that i'm getting really kind of crazy into it but it's uh but like i said boom but mc mb definitely check out if you're in that kind of looking for that category worth taking a look at and then we move into kind of the more popular uh you know the 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 Taylor made irons you're going to see more on the course, which would be, you know, first starting off the P770. Uh, I loved the 770. I played it last year and played the the the, or the previous generation 770s. Really, really liked them. Uh, put a couple different shafts in them, but but really liked those irons. I thought they were a great option for somebody who's looking to, you know, who, who's you know kind of like me. You're 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 uh, you know you're you're basically into single digits. You know, you need a little bit of help. Uh, you know, if you go to an iron that is a little more forgiving. Uh, you can definitely you know shoot a little better score. So the 770s are, are a really solid option there. Uh, I think the new one uh, looks really good. I like the new finish, which again brings in kind of that. Uh, you know, I guess I, I'm going to call it satin again with the MC and MB. It's kind of hard to say exactly that finishes. You know, because you don't really see the brush marks. So it's not brushed. Uh, I guess you see a little bit of the brush marks, but it's uh, yeah, kind of a satin finish, a duller finish, so you don't get the glare. But the new one uh, looks very similar to the old one. Uh, they did a really good job with this one. I, I feel like maybe they just uh, added a, a, a just a touch of offset, uh, you know, compared. I'd have to pull my old 7-iron out. Um, but, again, pretty minimal offset, uh, you know, a, a similar to the MC, if not maybe just a smidge more. But, I'm, I mean, it's pretty good-looking iron. When you set it down, it, it looks like a player's iron, which is super nice. And, th- and that's what I like. And it's not, uh, it's not crazy long heel to toe. It's not really big. It's very compact for being a multi-piece, uh, multi-piece iron. And this is the you know the 770 has the air foam uh, in there or air foam two I think as they call it, which is you know lighter. They've got air foam two in here. It's got a you know a face that's welded on. It's got uh, you know a, a you know tungsten and all these things inside of it. Um, so it's very high tech, but also very compact, and it offers you great, you know higher ball speed more forgiveness, but in a small package. And that's what I think a lot of us are looking for. When you're a guy like me, who's, you know, like a guy like me, who's a, who's a nine and a half and you, you, you do have bad days where you don't strike it, you know, anywhere near the center, this thing's going to let you get away with some of those shots. Uh, you know, ball speed wise, all that um, are really good. They definitely are a significant jump over the MC and the MB. And again, you see some added consistency there. So when you're not exactly dead center flush every shot, you still get that ball speed. You still get the ball to kind of get up in the air and go. And um, from the you know me playing these all last year, you could hit shots that you thought you know when you responsive re, responsive responsiveness wise, you feel it kind of go either low on the face or to, off the toe or wherever you hit it on the face that wasn't center, and the ball would still basically make it to the green you know you get on the front of the green or onto the fringe or just in front it would you know the miss was much much better you got away with it you could you know then walk up chip you know have an easy chip or even putt it from where you were uh but shots were just you know easier to get away from and, and when you missed it here uh if you missed it the same way on the blade or the mc you're coming up you know substantially shorter and you can really tell this one you know you'd get away you'd, you'd hit it and go oh no mm-hmm. And then you'd watch the where the ball landed, and you go, okay, like that's not uh, that's not as bad as I I thought. And there was a few times, you know, in my league when you you hit a ball and you just go, oh crap, like I missed that one, whatever, and it ends up on the green, you know, even though it's thirty feet away, whatever, forty feet away, it still ended up on the green. And then your playing partners are mad at you because, oh yeah, it was a really bad shot, you're you know on the green, but you still you know knew that you hit it, yeah, uh, you you knew you miss hit it, you knew you put a bad swing on it, it lets you get away with it, but. I've been a big fan of the P770. Uh, the 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 refinements in it in terms of look, they changed it up a little bit. Not not a ton. Uh, you know the the backside there, they made it all the same uh, material, then put a look, kind of that little chrome uh, section in the toe there. But uh, just kind of a refined look with some newer technology, and you know internally again they've got tungsten and all that to kind of progressively change the CG throughout the set. So 
the four iron is easier to hit up in the up in the air where the you know nine pitching wedge are going to offer a flatter more penetrating ball flight uh, for those irons these ones here when you compare them to the mb and mc they are just only a slight bit stronger uh, the seven iron here comes in at 33 degrees so one degree stronger uh, but the hot face uh, or the thin face on it and the air foam and all the multi-material stuff definitely gives it an advantage in terms of ball speed so when i was hitting these uh you know like i said e ugh, you know with these uh, it was definitely a notice uh, ball speed which i'll get into and you know just overall feel still really soft like the foam in there all that it still mutes the the, the feel you're still gonna get a good feeling soft feeling you know soft sounding shot uh, there's just a touch more firmness to it than the MC and the MB. And, you know, if you really listen, you can hear just maybe a, a touch of click. Uh, indoors, you might hear it. Outdoors, you probably wouldn't notice it as much. And it'll probably also depend on what ball you're playing. Uh, the firmer, cra you know, firmer uh, range balls that you hit, you're definitely going to maybe hear a little more of that click. Uh, you know, center shots, though, sound and feel really good, especially for a, an iron that's multiple pieces put together. You'd expect there maybe be some type of vibration, whatever there, and, and there isn't. So, uh, like I said, I've been a big fan of the 770. Uh, it's been a, a great iron. I, like I said, I haven't played the, I haven't played the, the new one uh, yet uh, out on the course, uh, but I played the, the old one uh, for most of most of last year. It was kind of like my rotation of, of gamer irons uh, that I played a lot of. And I think when Tursky and I and TG2 did kind of what's in the bags at the time, that was uh, the one that was in my bag. So it was uh, a really solid iron. And then you have the P790, which is TaylorMade's kind of bread and butter. And this is the larger version of the P770. But the nice thing about, the one thing I do have to say, that the one thing that I, I, I will say for TaylorMade is that the P790, most companies, when you get into this iron, which is kind of their iron for the everyday golfer who wants all the tech, wants everything, they've kept it where it doesn't have a lot of offset. It's got the most out of the four, for sure. But again, the way they blend the offset from the hosel into the leading edge, leading edge is very straight. It's the least rounded out of everything. The top line is definitely thicker, but proportionally to the size of the club head, which is the largest of the four, it doesn't look that far off. When you set this thing down, this is an iron that I feel like the P790 you're going to see in bags of scratch players, and you're going to see it in bags of, you know, 15 plus handicap, 20 handicaps. There's just, there's so much forgiveness. There's a ton of ball speed in it, but they didn't make it look like a big, huge forgiving iron. And I think most, com a lot of other companies, this iron in their line is even a little bit bigger, has a little bit more offset, maybe a thicker top line. It just doesn't have that player's look. Uh, and even from the back, when you look at it, I mean, they kind of shaped it like a little bit of a blade. They, they made it look like a player's club. And I think a 790 in a bag looks really good. And I think the players who, it, it just fits a wide range of players. Like I said, you could just be, you can be a, a low handy single digit handicap and you can be, you know, a guy who doesn't play as much or, you know, game isn't quite there any, you know, anymore. And either way, you're going to be able to play this iron, and, and it looks really good from a dress. The sole isn't crazy, crazy thick. I mean, in the essence, the again, the widest, the biggest of the the four, but it's not huge. It's not a big shovel. It's not anything crazy. These things just have a really good look, and I and I think TaylorMade did a really good job keeping that that DNA with the brand new version of the 790. So, I've never really played a ton of 790. I've always kind of been drawn to the 770 just because of its slightly more compact shape. But, I mean, the 790, you know, if you had, you know, handed me a set and said you had to play these, I'd have no problem playing these irons. And these ones here are rocket launchers. The the, they, the ball jumps off the face. Kind of anywhere you hit it on the face, it, it really goes. It uh, As you can see, if you're watching this on YouTube, my strike pattern is uh, just a hair off the toe and still getting the fastest ball speed out of all the irons uh, there that I, that I hit, all, all four of these. Just crazy fast ball speed. Uh, it, it, it launches high. I mean, it's easy to get in the air, but it isn't just straight up. You know, you're not hitting it just straight in the air. It's not an iron that, you know, is a one-trick pony where it just goes straight in the air, super high, and that's it. It it definitely can be, you know, it, you can work the ball with this thing. And like I said, it doesn't have a ton of offset. So you can, you know, hit fades, hit draws, all those shots. You can kind of hit with this. Now, 
is it going to be as easy to hit, you know, a specific draw compared to like the MB or the MC? No, it's going to take some of that away. It's going to, you know, it, it does have some, some MOI to it. It does have some forgiveness. So you maybe not be able to, to work it as much as those and flighting it down wouldn't be, won't be quite as easy, but you can definitely do it. You can do all those things, but the miss hits all that carry a ton of ball speed. Uh, the consistency when you're just slightly missing it, you know, like, you know, like I, I was on the toe, just slightly missing it there. You're still carrying a bunch of ball speed. You're still getting the ball to go a long way. And, you know, this is an iron that, you know, when you, you're going to get away with shots and hit some shots that aren't in the center that are going to end up being really, really good golf shots. So the 790 has been kind of the bread and butter for, for TaylorMade. I think it's one of the their best sellers just because it does fit that, that wide range of golfer. But between the two, the 790 and the 770, uh, again, you know, the stuff isn't crazy, crazy far off, but a, but a little bit there. So uh, carry distances both up over the MB and MC. Again, with the hot faces, you know, you're just going to get more ball speed. And yes, the lofts are stronger. The 770, though, is only one degree stronger uh, than the MC and MB. It's 33 degrees. Uh, the 790 is a little bit stronger at 30 and a half. So a little bit stronger. But the interesting thing is, even at that same law, you know, the loft being two and a half degrees different, which I know everybody says, like, oh, it's just loft jagging. There's really not doing anything. They're just adding loft. The launch on them is almost identical for May. So 20.3 degrees for the 770, 20.8 degrees for the 790. So even though it's two and a half degrees stronger, it still launches as high as the 770 for May. I mean, like I said, a half a degree difference between the two. If you just took a, a seven sending seven sending and bent it two and a half degrees strong, I don't think you'd see the same launch angle. Now, if you carry an absolute ton of ball speed or a ton of clubhead speed, sure, you could probably get away with that and, and make it work, and it would just go farther, and, and you could hit it high enough. But majority of golfers who are going to play these irons don't carry crazy crazy ball speed. So if you did that and bent everything crazy strong, you wouldn't see those type of launch numbers. But launch very, very similar, even though they're two and a half degrees different. Uh, the P- P790 being two and a half degrees stronger, launch angle half a degree more with you know two and a half degrees less less loft. So yes, it, it should go farther, but also that's part of the technology of it is that they're able to change that CG in these irons and move it down and all that. And you know if you took a blade and just bent it three degrees strong, you're not going to see the same performance as it had before. So, um, but anyway, distance wise. Carry, uh, 150 for the, the 770, 154 for the 790. And again, the 790, you know, both of them, I, I wasn't hitting it totally flush. Uh, you could see with the 770, I hit, you know, a handful of shots low on the face, you know, where you're kind of losing a little bit of ball speed there, but, you know, st- it's still averaging out, you know, 150, 154. Spin rate, uh, interesting that I spun the 770 the most out of all of them at 5839. Uh, I thought that was going to be definitely lower spinning uh, than than the rest. And again, these are seven irons, and these are range balls that I feel like definitely don't spin a whole lot. Um, and then the 790 was the lowest, of course, the lowest spinning of all of them at 5202. So uh, the lowest spinning... Uh, out of all of them, which I kind of expected. Uh, the P790 is typically high launch, low spin, helps the ball go a long way. Um, but 58, 39 to 5202, the 770 was definitely higher. And, and it wasn't just like, you know, one or two shots that, that really, uh, that did that. Uh, when I jumped in and, and looked, I was like kind of expecting like, oh, I'll have like, you know, one or two shots that, you know, were in the, you know, 6500s or whatever. No, I mean, they were all 58. 6, 57, 9, 58, 3, 58, 4. They were all right around the 57, 58 number. It was really actually consistent. It was more, it was probably the tightest consistency of spin uh, compared to any other iron or, or, or any of the four irons. It was probably the most consistent spin uh, out of all those. Uh, but the same thing with 790, though. I mean, it was actually the same thing. It was pretty darn close. I mean, you you basically fluctuated between 5,100 and, and 53, maybe a 5,400. But then I mean, they were all... Uh, you know, all pretty tightly in there. They they don't really have a ton of spin variation, even when you're kind of missing it from this, you know, missing it away from the center. You're just not seeing the spin go really high or really low. It's just, it stays consistent. And it's something we've seen with drivers all year. Definitely seeing it in, in these irons as well. Ball speed, this is where the big jump is. 770, 108.5 to 110.2. So both you can tell the thin faces, the foam inside, the hollow body, definitely adds uh, a good amount of ball speed, you know, compared to the 104s from the MC and the MB. Uh, so a, a significant jump there. And, you know, a, again, I think 
you know, people always kind of say like, oh, it's all loft. I don't think it's all loft. I don't think just changing loft is going to add four miles an hour of ball speed. I think you're going to have to see some other things in there to make that happen. Um, and I, and I will say the P790 did have a, it's the only one that didn't have a KBS tour 120. Uh, it came with the dynamic gold 105. So I will give it that it is a slightly different shaft, but still, uh, smash factor again, higher. You're at one, two, one, two, nine with the 770, one, three, four with the 790. Uh, the launch angle, like I said, the launch angle again, 20.3 in the 770, 20.8 in the 790. And, uh, the apex ended up being, of course, uh, higher with the 790, 89 with the 770, uh, 89 feet, and 96 feet with the 790. So 790, definitely the longest out of the three, or out of the four, uh, like, like, you, like you would expect. I mean, I think you'd expect this, the MB and the MC to be shorter. Uh, they've got weaker lofts. They don't have any speed built into them. I mean, these are, you know, it's distance irons versus precision irons. So I don't think anything there is, is shocking. All four irons I, I'm really impressed with. I really like. I think, uh, again, if you were to say you got to pick one that play the full set, I think I would go 770. I think that's just, it's kind of that good cheater iron for me where it looks like a player's club. Looks like, you know, smaller and all that, but I get all the, the, the performance and, and all the tech out of it. So uh, 770, 790, really, really good. But again, the, 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 but the MB and MC, just really solid player's irons. So if you're uh, looking for new irons this year, you know, and, and if you fit into kind of one of those categories, I think it's worth, you know, the 770, 790 are, are always stuff that's tried by everybody. I think if you're somebody who's looking for that player's cavity, the MB and the MC are definitely worth trying. They're, they're, they're really good feeling, uh, and they, they, they look really good performance-wise. I mean, you know, compared to other irons, are they going to be faster, longer, whatever? You know, you're going to talk about marginal things when you're talking about these one-piece Ford Teds. So, 770, 790, uh, I would play the 770. Uh, the combo set, though, I mean, I could, I could see doing like a 794 iron and then doing the rest of the set uh, is 770s. That would be kind of cool. Uh, or throwing in some uh, some other combos and, and adjusting some lofts accordingly. But really good set irons. Been a big fan of the, the, the tailor-made irons for a while. I, I played the you know 770s as gamers, but uh, really fun. So if you go to tailormadegolf.com, check out more of the specs, all that stuff uh, on all four of these irons. But, you know, really enjoyed hitting them. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if... They may, you know, one of them makes it in the bag for the year. We'll see. Uh, maybe another, you know, maybe a new 770 year. We'll, we know, we don't know. But uh, anyway, that's uh, that's all I've got this week. Hopefully, you have a good uh, weekend. Maybe watch a little golf. I know WGC Dell Match Play started up, uh, started up yesterday actually uh, on Wednesday, and it, it's always kind of fun to see the Match Play stuff. Um, so it'll be uh, fun to watch. Uh, I'll, I'll hopefully get to watch a little bit more of it. I know I haven't been watching a ton of tournament golf lately. Just been, you know, when I'm not at work, it's, you know, it's family time. So, uh, hopefully watch a little go- bit of golf. Like I said, I like the match play and then we're on to next week and we're a little bit close to the masters. So masters is coming up. It's always exciting. It's, uh, you know, fun to see the, the bags, the head covers, all the limited edition gear, all that fun stuff. It's always great to see that stuff, so I'm excited to see what these companies come up with this year. And, I mean, the Masters is just its such a good weekend. So, anyway, have a great uh, rest of the week. Hopefully you get out and play some golf, and we'll see you next week.